In Illustrator, when you go to use content or create artwork, you're going to probably reuse content. You're going to probably want to go in and, like these musical notes, be able to create copies of things. That's easy because we can copy-paste, but we also want to be able to edit all of them at one time or make changes to them. So we want to use symbols a lot of times. So symbols, if you look in Illustrator on the right over here, you're going to see the symbols panel. Now, I've got a bunch already created in here, but symbols are basically stored artwork that are stored in this file, the file that's open. Every file you open has its own symbol library, and this is it right here. Basically, when you store artwork in here, and you can create your own. You can just later drag it out from the symbols panel here, and you'll see that you can then use it. As you drag out these little symbols, each one of these is called an instance, which basically means it's linked to the original symbol. With an instance selected out here, if you look up in the control panel way up here, you're going to see it says, this is a symbol, here's the name of it, which in most cases doesn't really matter. It's an instance of ribbon, that symbol. You can edit it if you want to, you can break its link, which means it won't update. And that's the best part about symbols. If you update the original symbol, it updates the instances out here. It also makes for a smaller file because we don't have 50 copies of this. You only have one instance of it. It just refers to it, which is pretty cool. If you come to one of these symbol instances or to the thumbnail on the symbols panel, you can actually double click to edit it. It's gonna say, oh, you're about to edit the symbol. I click okay, it'll edit it in place. I can then select the artwork that's in the symbol and maybe go make a change to it, like I'll make it red or something. There you go. Now I can exit symbol editing mode because that's where I'm at right now. I can click on this little arrow up here or double click somewhere, press escape. There's a million ways to do this. It just edited the original symbol and it updated it out here in each instance. That's pretty powerful. Okay. One of the issues though is that with an instance out here, we can really only do things like transformations and simple things like that to each instance. What if we wanted to go into an instance, for instance, did I just say that? And we wanted to edit one of them, maybe the colors or different things like that, without breaking it. Watch this. If I select an instance and you come up here and you click on break link, it basically makes it so that if you now update the original symbol, this artwork that's selected will not update. It's been broken. That's the idea. What we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, is show you how to work with what's called dynamic symbols. This takes it a step further, and this is pretty cool, actually. So I'm going to delete these. Know that Illustrator has a bunch of symbol libraries already built in. If you come to the Symbols panel and click on this little icon right here, these are all the symbol libraries you can start with. I'll, I'll go to uh, Tiki. This is part of the, the book I wrote. And you'll see that there's a lot of them in here. And we have a guitar. So if you want to use one of these, what you can do is you can either click on it to add it to the symbol library for the document, or you can just, you know, simply like drag one out. Once you drag one out, you can also drag it from your symbol library if you have it in there. Just close the little panel and we've got ourselves a symbol. Now what I'll do is this, I'm going to put one over here and I want another one over here. So you can either copy the instance and it still is an instance, or you can just drag another, for instance, guitar out. I'll drag it out and put it right here. Now what I want to do is I want to take this one and flip it. Easy. Uh, you can go in and do things like scale, transform, do different things to it, and it still works. It's still a symbol instance. It'll still update. If I come to the W, X, Y, or H, or the word transform, come to the transform panel, you'll see flip horizontal. We can do that. That looks great. All right, I'll click somewhere to get rid of that. Now what I'd like to do is just make it a little smaller. So I'm going to shift drag the corner here, and you'll see, once again, we can still go in and update. If I come to the original symbol by double clicking on this instance and editing it or coming over here and clicking, double clicking on the actual uh, icon over here, the thumbnail, you can edit the original symbol. Now I'm going to do it over here instead in the symbols panel. So I'll double click on the thumbnail. What's interesting about that is last time when I showed you, I double clicked on the artwork out here to edit the symbol. It let me edit it in place. If you double click over here in the symbols panel, it's gonna open the original symbol artwork all by itself. So you can edit it out in the center out here. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, just so we have some something to look at here. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna select this part back here. Now I'm gonna to have to double click probably to select it, there we go. Or use the direct selection tool. I'm gonna to change the color of that. So this big blue box right here. 
And I'm going to come in here and say, okay, let's make that brown or something like that. There we go. Now, I just did it to two shapes. That's totally fine. I don't care. If I want to be done and I want to update the instances on the page, I can either double click, press escape, or click the arrow up here to get out a couple times. There we go. You'll now see that the instances are updated. Now, if you work on the web, for instance, you're doing web design or UI design or even print, and you suddenly realize, well, one of these guitars needs to be red instead. In the past, we'd have to click on the instance, break the link, and then edit it in place, and it would no longer be linked to the original symbol. So it would just be a group of artwork out there. Well, now we can work with what are called dynamic symbols. If you create a new symbol or you go to edit the symbol, you can make it dynamic. Here's how we do that. If you make a new symbol, it'll ask you, do you want it to be dynamic? If you have an existing symbol, look at the little thumbnail in the symbols panel. If you see a little plus in the corner, that means that it's a dynamic symbol. This guitar one is not. So if I click on the thumbnail once to select it, come down here and click symbol options, I can say make it dynamic. Every new symbol you create is going to be dynamic by default. And I'll show you what dynamic means. I'll click OK. It's not going to change anything out here. It's just going to now be dynamic. But you will see a plus icon in the corner of the symbol over here. Now what I can do, this is the best part. Now that the symbol is dynamic, each instance is dynamic, which means we can go do some things to it. you got to use the direct selection tool, the white arrow over here in the tools panel to do this. Now what I can do is come over here and click on, for instance, the blue body right here. Let me click off and then click on. There we go. You can see I can now select it. Now I'm going to go edit the color. So I can't do it up here. I'm going to go over to the swatches panel and pick another color. I'll maybe make it red. Nice. Then I can click on different varying shapes out here and make them different colors too. This being dynamic allows me to do it. So I can easily go out and start to manipulate this. The best part about this now is this. I'm going to go back to the selection tool here. I'm going to double click on the instance here. It's going to say, okay, you're about to edit the original symbol. It didn't break the link. It's still linked to the symbol. I'll click OK. Look what it's doing. Basically, what we did out there with the dynamic symbol with the direct selection tool was to override what's going on in the original symbol. I'm going to make this simple here. I'm just going to click maybe on, I, it's a group, so I'm going to double click to get in there. I'm going to click on this object right here and just make it a little taller, for instance. We did this in the book I wrote. And then I'm going to double click away to close it, to finish editing, rather. Look what it did. You're going to see it made both of these instances taller, but it didn't override the colors I did. That's a dynamic symbol. Dynamic symbols are awesome. Think of it as maybe you have a whole bunch of icons. They all have the same, I don't know, icon, but they just need to be different colors. You can, you don't have to go in then and make a bunch of different symbol things and go crazy with this and break the links and all that. You can now use a dynamic symbol to basically make each instance different.